one last Welcome back to the Jenna Julie Podcast, the final episode of 2017. Feels kind of crazy. Feels crazy, man. Feels very crazy. It's going to feel all different in 2018 because <laughs> we're going to be in the same exact room with the same exact camera, same exact mics. It's going to be 20, 2018, it's though. It's going to be totally different. It's going to be crazy different. <laughs> Can't even tell you because next month means there's a new collection of MeUndies dropping. Oh! And you, you don't have to already. wait till next month. You can get your MeUndies right fucking now. Wow. So you go to MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. You get 20% <laughs> off. Okay. It's an exclusive deal just for you. All right. Uh, holiday socks, holiday underwear, three times softer than cotton, right to your front door. Guys, what's the one gift you give but you never want? It's undies. Okay. So now you want to give the I gift. I think you have that backwards. You give but you never want. Sorry, you always get but you never want it. <laughs> Sorry, the what? one gift you get, but you but you never want. <laughs> what? Right? Growing up, right? I got socks. That sucked. I got underwear. That sucked. But me and these changes that all. Okay, it flips it on its head. Now it's like cool to get those those gifts. So you might as well spread that love around your family. They're gonna be like, what? You got me underwear? Then they're gonna touch it and they'll be like, wow, you're my favorite person in this room now. <laughs> and it's gonna get real awkward because they're gonna fight with other people. Also guys, Lyft is sponsoring the podcast. Guys, the holiday season is expensive. Okay, you can start driving for Lyft on your time right now. You make your own hours, you flip into driver mode and they're looking for drivers right now, okay? So you go to lyft.com, that's L-Y-F-T dot com slash Jenna Julian. You sign up. Uh, be a new driver for Lyft. It's a great, awesome gig to get going. Like I said, you make your own hours. It's really great. And uh, you get a new $500 new driver bonus when you sign up using that URL or click the link in, link in the description B. Low. Thank you, sponsors. Are you're you welcome. Okay? Is your neck On okay? behalf of the sponsors, you're welcome. <laughs> I am the sponsor. Yo, soy peligro. Yo, soy peligro. Oh, my God. It's like you really want to learn not, how to do that effect. Not even correct Spanish. The high, the the blast, like the blasted speakers effect. Yeah. Because you just saw the, saw the video. Yeah, I love that. <sighs> well, wait, the last podcast, we were here, right? Oh, yeah, we did the Scott one and then yeah. we did the tree cast. It's crazy, man. It's crazy to think that next time we're here recording, it's, you know, it's not going to be the holiday season. It's going to be the new year. I don't know. Every year it feels like that, but it's, what are we going on year three with this thing? I don't know. I think so. Shit, we don't even know. <laughs> I think we have like 140 episodes, 52 weeks in a year. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, we take some weeks off. Yeah. But yeah. Which means we're past year three. Damn. I don't know maths. I Quick maths. Know. But, um, man, it's, it's really cool. It's exciting. We, so we figured for this episode, we could just kind of sit and recap the year. Um, but on a personal level. Well, we divided it into categories. The categories are as follows. Uh, we had personal things that we're going to reflect on because, I mean, one thing that I think a lot of us can agree on is that a lot of 2017 was a laughable but. dumpster fire. It was but. It was a dumpster fire. A lot of fucking not cool things happened in 2017. And I don't think we're going to be recapping a lot of that because you can find that just about everywhere on the internet. <laughs> but we're going to recap like our favorite stuff of the year. <laughs> so we have personal stuff, mm -hmm. YouTubers, memes, podcast episodes, and songs. Yes. It's good. <laughs> I say we start, well, let's end with the personal stuff. Let's start okay. the, the other stuff first. Oh, HQ's playing. Um, <laughs> Hi, Scott. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Lag daddy. All right. Which one do you want to start with? I think we should start with uh, podcasts. Podcast episodes. Yeah, like our favorite podcast of 2017. All right. Also, guys, if you want to tweet us on Jenna Julian Podcast or on our main accounts, like some of your favorite moments of this year, like feel free to do that because I honestly yeah. love when you guys do that because um, you see things from a completely different perspective than we do. Right. Um, you know, but you're in the same world. You're see all the, seeing all the content we're being a part of. And uh, so feel free to join this party right now, so to speak, and tweet, you know, your favorites at us if we miss any or whatever. All right. Your favorite, go with a podcast. You start. Okay. I had... <laughs> 
pizza party, which is actually funny because like that night, I forget what was going on, but like we were completely exhausted. We're also like completely out of ideas for the podcast at that moment. Yeah. Like I know you guys know this, but like, you know, for however long I've been doing YouTube and the podcast and I run my radio show every week, like the, the live stream, I feel like, or Twitch is like a lot easier because it's sort of just there hanging out. Uh, but a lot of the rest of what I do for the week is like constantly coming up with things, which gets so completely draining and exhausting. And that was just one of those weeks where we were just like, I got nothing of value right now. What do you say we sit down and order some pizzas and have a pizza party on the podcast and do like pin the tail on the donkey and like cups. Hide and seek. Yeah. So like a lot of the podcasts I feel like was we didn't know if it was going to work. What was what was going to happen? And a, a lot of podcasts are like that. Like, yeah, yeah. We come up with an idea for something, but, you know, we can't really be sure if it's even going to be fun or funny, if you guys are going to like it, if it's going to be entertaining, if we're going to like it. But Pizza Party <laughs> was like <laughs> just the purest form of fun that I think we've had on the podcast. So I'm like, it's maybe not the greatest podcast episode ever to but as listen an experience to. of doing yeah, it yeah. but like for us and i think for people to watch us yeah. physically play hide and seek yeah. in the podcast like that moment of you hunched behind me like a gargoyle <laughs> absolutely maybe not my top of the year but puts that podcast in the top of the year yeah, I mean, you have to remember, and it's, it's kind of a hard thing to think about when you're watching or listening to a podcast, is that it's just like a video. It's just like any other creation where it, it stems from an idea and has to be developed into right. a full thing. Like these podcasts are anywhere from like, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes to an hour, hour, 10 minutes. And that's a lot of time to fill. And so a lot of times it might seem like we're just on here doing whatever, mm -hmm. but it, it does take creatively a lot of energy and, Some you know, prep. Energy and prep in in a out of a out of a brain space that's already giving out that energy and prep right. for other things like you, you right. know, and myself. Um, but that's that was a fun one. That was really fun. Like I didn't think it was going to be that fun because yeah. I was like coming up with what games we could play and like let's stack cups, let's play pin the tail on the donkey, and you wrote the sponsors on the cardboard, and then you <laughs> you hid behind me like a gargoyle. Oh uh, yeah, that's some of my best work, I think. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> like just that clip, I could watch over and over again of me being like, "Okay, where are you?" And I look. Around you the were room. like scream laughing. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. That was a good one. Um, you, All right. Yeah. So I'll do mine. Um, but I have. We'll, we'll one, go back and two, forth. Three, four. Okay. We'll go back and forth. We'll see um, if we have any overlapping. The car cast. Oh. I think we did two this year. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't remember when the first one was. Um, yeah. So we the, the most recent one, we went to get donuts and we were like, let's just do a car cast where we drive and get donuts. And. I don't know. It's it was it was a fun experience. Um, I think a because we got donuts. Anytime you get fucking donuts, life is goddamn good, and it's going to be ingrained in your memory that that was a good night. Um, but I think it was cool because we. I don't know. I remember that we got there. We were halfway through the podcast because we like braked. We were like, okay, we're gonna break, go get our donuts, come back and start up again. And they were so nice to us in there. They, like, comped our donuts for no reason. Um, and then we got back, and we were just kind of eating there. And, like, I remember there was a moment where I was just, like, sitting there eating my donut with my mic, you know, talking to you. And, like, there's a camera there. And I was just, like, so thankful that it was, like, that's what we got to do that night mm -hmm. as, like, a part of our job. And I think that was, like, a really cool, fun way of, like... Uh, taking the podcast and making it a new format just because we felt like it that week and it turned out to be like a, a very cool like life experience type of fun. I agree. I feel like we did a couple of things with the podcast this year that al allowed us to play with the format, at least physically. Like having a, a mobile... Hey, you can just say move close to the mic instead of going like this Sorry, to I'm me. trying to help you. Go ahead. I, Julian Solomita, have a disease where I have to touch a microphone it's every not a disease. 30 seconds. It's, it's when you're like talking back here, I can't hear you. You and can I don't... hear me. Right, I'm just trying to help. I think it's cool that we played with like 
the staticness of this room and you know even if sometimes we were like what if we just podcast it in the car like first of all it was a magnificent feat for you to like make the car able to podcast it like the way you taped all the everything everywhere yeah it took it wasn't just like let's go hop in the car and throw the camera in there like you it's, really it's hard to rig a car totally. with audio and, and yeah you kitted that thing out and even while we did the couch cast and the Christmas tree, like, yeah, maybe they're not like the our best podcast subject matter wise or any other way. Yeah. But like, I'm proud of us for trying different things. And at least like, like, I, I look up to Rhett and Link a lot, love them. A lot of the Internet looks up to them and loves them as well. Yeah. Like they they really do a lot for the podcast format in terms of online. And, and what what is it? Because they're breaking the rules because there really exactly. are no rules if you think about it. They're exactly. like, yeah, I think I think that's a good aspect of the yeah. podcast. So, I mean, yeah. we don't we don't have editing or like a show format like they do sometimes. But it, I think that it's really cool watching them, you know, transform their podcast into something that's so different. And, you know, maybe we're doing it in slow little baby steps but i'm proud of us for you know trying different things and not just letting it be exactly the same all the time yeah yeah it's cool and for some reason like again we never it's just the internet like we never know what people are gonna like if you post things on the internet you're never gonna know what people like or don't like you yeah. just you know throw stuff out there and yeah. uh you guys liked that stuff so it was it was cool and it was encouraging so yeah and i think that like 50 percent of that goes to me and 50% of that goes to you, like the credit of, of us doing that because uh, sometimes you are you have an idea and I'm just like, okay. And then sometimes I'll have an idea and you're just like down, right? Mm -hmm. And like if we weren't down for those kind of out of the box moments, yeah. we wouldn't have those. Right. So like pizza party, like I love how that happened <laughs> and I love how car cast happened. Like we couldn't fucking think of an idea to podcast and we really wanted donuts and I was like, what if we just fucking podcast on the way to get donuts? <laughs> like, like sometimes that's fucking life yeah, though, man. Yeah, exactly. You know? and Especially I think, when you're doing it every week, you're like, on top of everything else that you do every week, and it's a lot, you know? So you're like, fuck, man, I just got to keep it real right now. Let's go get some fucking donuts. Yeah, and, and like, being real, like, at the it's the end of the year, mm -hmm. and we get two weeks off. We're going to see you uh, in January. We're going to take Christmas and New Year's off. But going into this break and going into the next year, like, I don't feel like, oh, another year we have to do the podcast. I feel like just as excited as I ever have been about the podcast yeah. because of seeing how we've been able to sustainably continue it. Mm -hmm. Like we've made decisions to where we're happy each week as much as it's like a job and, and you know, it takes work. We're not feeling like exhausted by it creatively or otherwise. Absolutely. And I think it's a cool thing that we're ending the year and I'm feeling like, like excited to go into next year. I with agree. hundred percent. Um, what else was one of your, or should, is it my turn? Your turn. Yeah. 2017 comments. Oh, that was my first one. <laughs> that was your yeah. first one. It's a really good one. Like that kind of was, iconic. That was uh, that was another thing inspired by all of you lovely people that comment. You guys on gave us content that yeah, week. Yeah, <laughs> but it was you know universally something that was taking over the internet, and so we just we just consolidated it in one <laughs> yeah. spot, in one little fifty minute. But it it it, it, it honestly makes for a great game. You it know? is a great game. And it's kind of turned into like a running game, like in the Twitch chat and well, stuff. Well, yeah. People. And even like when, when we're doing podcasts, it's like, I don't know. We'll have to go back and look. Like when we started doing this, like writing Roulette. things in, in cups and making things go together. Yeah. It's it like just provides endless hours of fun. Like if you're if you're fucking camping or like doing something, you, you're not using your phone and yeah. you're just hanging out and having fun. It's so outrageously fun. Yeah. The, the roulette style of kind of podcasting yeah i don't think i put it on here but i absolutely loved the presidential roulette mm -hmm. one that we made because i thought that was so fucking funny about gary johnson being the president over and over and over and over. yeah what we do we do <laughs> presidential roulette bad roulette clickbait roulette yeah um headline roulette like yeah. there were a lot of them they were all really fucking fun yeah but i think 2017 comments really came it, like those were made for that kind of format because you could just throw anything together that's violent or inappropriate and it really does make a great 2017 cup. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It Manually rewind my pussy like a VHS tape. Oh my God. <laughs> what else you got? Um, let's see. I think I have the same one as you. I just saw. Uh, segway off. Yeah. Mine too. Really? Yeah. That's funny. But that was another thing where you like didn't know if that was going to be 
Well, yeah, or fun I was kind of or... worried that wasn't going to be a good podcast. Yeah. Because, like, was it too meta, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I do the segues for fun to make the sponsors enjoyable for you guys. And it's kind of a meme at this point. But I was afraid that not only was it, this podcast going to take away from that, but it was going to, like, kind of just make for a weird yeah, it could podcast. have been weird. Yeah. Totally could have been weird. But the fact that like you were you were so proud of yourself when you were saying <laughs> it and like couldn't hold it in and I was just like dying laughing. And also like honestly having a taste of my own medicine on the real, like having you do it to me, like yeah. it was a really funny kind of like shift in how the podcast works. I feel like in 2018, that's something that I would return to. Segue off? Yeah. It's a, it's a definitely, like, we can definitely do a part two for that thing. Yeah. yeah. And even Snake Oil, I've seen a lot of people request that we play again. Yeah, that one. Oh, Snake Oil was fun. <laughs> oh, Snake Oil. We, see, the, the thing about those, like, those ones is, like, when you're in, a, like, a fucky mood yeah. and you're, like, excited and those those ones are the best. Yeah. I agree. Snake oil was good. I, it looks like a couple of our... You had Scott and Esto as your Scott other Scott and Esto are my other two. I had Esto, but also Scott. But I had I thought for some reason I had to keep it short, but... Yeah. I mean, it was, Esto was such a sweet kid. The story of how he got on the podcast and how he was on the podcast. And it was just all so, so cool to me. Yeah. I feel like that was such a cool moment in like... You know, we found his videos on my channel and everyone was like... I, I thought it was so funny when he made a video and his mom made a video and everyone was tweeting at them at me being like, he made another video. I'm like, I know. Yeah. I found him on the internet yeah, bitch, by myself. I've been known. By myself. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I just think it was really cool. And it was such like a a really fun internet moment for me, you yeah, know, to, to find someone that you really enjoy and then to have a chance to talk to them. It's yeah. like, when does that get to happen? Never. Literally never. You know? It was like a very, very cool thing. Like a lot of times you have to wait years to go fucking meet somebody or have a conversation with them if you've been a fan of theirs on the internet. Yeah. You know, us included all the time. Like just because we're in the community doesn't mean sometimes we get to meet or talk to somebody ever, you know? Yep. So it was like, it was really, really, really cool. It was like a a true internet moment it for was me to have him. It was nice. On the podcast. It was and really he's cool. just the fucking sweetest, man. Yeah. Well, that's kind of it. And then Scott. And Scott. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was awesome. But I was really proud. I was I was proud of the Scott one. That was cool. He's a big deal. So, I mean, we, I guess in 2017, we didn't really have a ton of guests, which I'm okay with. I am too. And I would like you to answer in the comments below how you feel about that as well, too. Because I feel like, and this is no shade at anybody ever, but I feel like a lot of other podcasts is just always, you know, a new guest all the time. And, you know, sometimes I just feel like that's not what we want all the time or what you guys want all the time. It, w- it would take up a lot of time to make sure we were booked with a guest every single week. And maybe it's nice to just listen to a podcast with just fuck show shit. I agree. You know, I agree. And logistics aside of having to book guests on a weekly basis, that's tough. Um, Absolutely. But aside from the logistics of having to do that. We created this podcast for the exact reason of what we do. Yeah. And three years later now, we're doing the same thing as we were at that coffee table with those USB mics on the laptops. Like, we, we, this is what we wanted to do. Just talk about shit and play stupid games and maybe drink sometimes and yeah. have our kind of dialogue be shared with you. And I think it's cool that, like, our podcast revolves around that. And the occasional guest will make it special, but we yeah. that's not our bread and butter. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that I think that's cool. And, there, like, again, again, like you said, there's nothing wrong with podcasts that, that circle around each episode having a new guest. That's traditionally what a podcast is. Right. But I think it's cool how we've done it and stayed kind of true to it. Yeah, I like it. It makes it, like, more Jen and Julian podcast. Totally. Yeah. Well, plus also, I feel like... We do our podcast out of our house, so anytime someone's on the podcast, we have to smash them into this little room and, like, you know, get them past the barking smash dogs, is a et cetera, et cetera. So it's like there's a level of professionalism to having a guest that I'm not sure we're quite at I yet. can't believe we fit Elijah <laughs> and Christine on this fucking desk. All of us. I can't believe it. What a feat of a wide lens For that real. was. It that wasn't really even was. a wide That was our normal lens. I just zoomed all the way out and fucking stretched the green <laughs> screen and moved the table back. It's hard, though. It's hard to have... 
more than one guest. And even when we do have a guest, it's like the person sitting in the middle sort of like talking to us like this. You know, like eventually I think someday we're, we're going to play with the physical format. But, you know, we rent our house. This is, we've done a lot this is, in this yeah. room and we'll keep this until we move out of here someday. But like I'm not opposed to making it more comfortable to be able to have guests on. Down you know? the road. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's a goal of both of ours. Yeah. I think we should have Rome back on the podcast and tell her to come over like on a Saturday and just not be home. What is wrong with you? Like not be home. <laughs> we just leave. Just turn off all the lights. <laughs> Except when she pulls into the driveway, um, we shut the gate. So she's stuck and can't leave. What's wrong with you? Where do you want me to start? I have a couple categories of what's wrong with me. Is all that right. going? It is going. It's oh, okay. An, I, it's super yeah. Slow. If you have it all zoomed in, it, it goes lagging and it was freaking out. Um, all right. So next we have... YouTubers, songs, and memes. Let's do late stuff. Let's do songs. Let's do songs. What are your favorite songs? 2017. I feel like my favorite songs are everyone's favorite songs, so I just, I just picked two really obscure songs. Well, one really obscure... Well, one sort of obscure song and one really sad song. Okay. The obscure sort of is Everything Now by Arcane Fire. Oh, Tire. you love that song. Yeah, it's not very obscure. It was trending. It's a big song. But I like it. It's not like on top 40 all the time. It's... Yeah. You I love just, that song. I like that song. Love that song. I like that song. Um, and then Too Good at Goodbyes was something that really got to me this you year. You love that song. I like it. And Jenna hates that I like it because it's like, what? it's emo time. And I'm like, turn it up. She's like, no, <laughs> no, I want to be happy. Yeah, no, you, Julian's definitely guilty of like, they're all, we'll have friends over or like having a drink or like sometime when everybody's just trying to kick it. And remember when we first met and like Pink's try was sort of like big on the radio or maybe not like. Right when we first yeah. met, like, yeah, it was like little, around little, that time, little yeah. Into there. But so we'd be like drinking and hanging out, and he's like, I got a song, y'all, and it's like, da, 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 and I'm like, dude, I do not want to turn up to this right now. I do, whoa, low key downer. You no. you've not properly turned up until you've turned up to Pink's try. <sighs> Gotta get a okay. take a shot. No, it just makes for like a sad night, man. Like if you're at a party and all of a sudden someone yanks the ox cord. Okay, I'm not. I'm not literally turning up to it. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Just sue me, okay? I like that song. No, it's 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 not that you like the song. It's like when you play it at times when I'm like, dude, come on. I man. just <laughs> I just have moments when I'm drinking where I get maybe a little emotional and I'm like, okay, I want to hear something that's tapping into that. Okay. I get it. But uh, when that song came out, it, Julian was sitting in the office. I was, like, upstairs in the shower or something. And I come down, and he's just sitting there like this in his computer chair, blasting <laughs> Sam Smith to get like, goodbyes. And I'm like, babe, are you okay? Are you all right? And you were like, yeah. The song's just, it's so good. <laughs> like, you were even, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, But what? Sam Smith could just sing about, like, a potato, and I'd make it my ringtone. I don't even need to relate to the lyrics. Man. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's a great song. Yeah. I feel you. Um, Want to hear my song? Yeah. Number one, easily, don't hate me for saying this, but Despacito. It, it, like, not only broke records on YouTube, but, like, so I do my radio show once a week on Sirius XM, and that was trending. And if there's anything I learned from 2016, 2015, 2014, whatever, yeah. the biggest songs of the year on YouTube are almost always, with the exception of K-pop occasionally, almost always in Spanish. Spanish-speaking songs, videos, they get, like, triple the views. Ridiculous, of other, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, insane views. And, um... When I heard that song, when it was first trending on my show, I, you know, I'd do my research, I watch the video, you know, look up about the person and whoever. Yeah. I recognized Daddy Yankee. So I was like laughing a little to myself, like, oh shit, God, it's 2017. I got a song about Daddy Yankee on my show. Hell yeah. And like the first time that I heard it, I was like, this could have come out 10 years ago or 10 years from now. Yeah. And it would just be a fucking good song. And it's a great fucking song. Yeah, yeah. The video's cute and adorable, and I heard the lyrics are. And that was filthy. before the Bieber verse. <laughs> totally. That was yeah, what, yeah. You were on that Spanish. song before it blew up. 
It was in like, Spanish. To the point that it really Right, did. yeah, because we just play whatever's trending. Yeah, yeah. And so that weekend, Brett came over, and I, I sat that. down, and we, like, you know, usually when Brett comes over, he's like, you got any good music? Because he works at Apple now. He used to work at Amp Radio with you. Yeah. And so we were always, like, trading songs and stuff that we are like... Whatever. Yeah, we were and sharing it, what we found. Yeah, so I played him Despacito, and he felt the same way. He was like, "This is fuck. This is fucking dope." And then come, you know, a year later, it's the most viewed song on YouTube, the most viewed video on YouTube of all time. Forty two. Wait, four point three. Four point three billion. billion. Or something. billion. I don't even know anymore. What the fuck? So I mean, I feel like I I can argue that it's one of the biggest songs of the year, one of my favorite songs of the year, and I just thought it was cool. Yeah. And no, I am I'm not completely sick of it. Like, no, I'm not either. And the story behind it is very cool, like for you at least. I like it a lot. That's cool. Um, I also had "Stay" by Zed and Alessia Cara. I knew you were gonna. How put many that. times I knew did you were I listen put that to that song? A hundred million. How many times? A hundred million before, like. And I love that song, but like you played it so much on your phone before it was even on the radio and then it was on the radio. I was like, oh, I've heard this a hundred million times. You love that song. I was good. I knew you were going to put it on your list. Something about the way they fucking put those chords together, man. It just like hits you in this like soul place. I fucking, it, oh my God, I can't. Yeah. Alessia um, had a big year. Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't she, is she nominated for a Grammy? I don't know. I know her song with Logic is nominated for best video. At oh, least well then, and something yeah. else, but I can't remember. Would not surprise me at all. Forgive me. Yeah. Um, sh- can you look it up? Yeah, yeah, Will you? yeah, for sure. Um, I also thought it was so hysterical when BTS did a red carpet interview, uh, with Chelsea, who works a lot of VidCon and stuff, but. I forget what award show, maybe American Music Awards. And she was like, what American artists would you, or what artists would you guys uh, want to work with in the future? And they all just were like, Zed, totally Zed. Like they were fangirling over Zed. Yeah. So like, she's a nominee for Best New Artist, Song yeah, of the yeah, Year, yeah, yeah. Best Music Video, and Best Pop Duo for Stay. So lit. Dude, Alessia Cara killed it this year. That's insane. I know. Shout out to Alessia. She's a ding fam. Um, but I just thought it was so cute that all of BTS was like, you know, there's there's no like Kanye, there's no Lady Gaga or like yeah. it's just Zed. We all want to work with Zed <laughs> yeah. so bad. I, know, that's and I was so like, funny. you guys are fucking dope and you appreciate dope music. And yep. good for you. You guys are fucking great and adorable and delightful. Um, I also had Chasing Highs by Alma. Oh, that's such a good one. I should have put that one. That one's such a good song. Such a good song. I was Jason Pat. Yeah, uh, that was like another one that we just played relentlessly. Yeah. If you have not seen that video, I cannot recommend it enough. If you watch that video and like are not in love with her at the end of that, get fucked. You're lying to yourself. She's the fucking dopest chick in the whole world. Yeah. And I love her voice and I love that song, that video. The video fucks. was cool. It was shot in old Vegas. Uh, it was shot very, like, very. I don't want to say like DIY because it's such a high quality video, but the way they shot it, the the, the different vignettes they had and the yeah. set pieces, it looked like they just they were like there when no one was there. Yeah, it was really but like, really cool. Her hair, her style, like I just I fucking she had love her. The bright yellow Julian hair. Yeah, yeah, I love her. I'm obsessed with her. Alma, Alma, um, Tarzan boy. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, hey. It's a song that came out in like 1987 or some shit. It just happened we from just, Twitch. We're like, we started playing yeah, it on all of our channels. Twitch and, yeah. and I also now it's had, our chicken dinner song. Yeah. I also, for my last song, because I was trying to keep it condensed, okay, don't get mad at me. Lemon, N E R D, and Rihanna. Mm. Amazing. That one's good. Amazing. That one's good. It's such like a, a absolute fuck you to the pop form that's been going on for a long time. And, and, Please don't come for me in the comments. Pharrell, you're doing a wonderful job being commercial, wearing your big hats, and making very commercial pop music. But it was fucking amazing to, like, as someone that loved NERD, to hear them make music again. Mm-hmm. Like, that with that actual edge and not just, because I'm happy. Da, 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 I agree. And, like, I agree. Sh- yeah, I agree. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that fucking hard shit or get out. I agree. And Rihanna's rap verse on there was fantastic. Yeah. And she could literally make a 10 minute long song of her farting. And I would be like, hell yeah. This is the dopest shit I've ever heard. 
but it was fantastic. Is that something that you want to happen? <laughs> Actually, yeah. Would it, would it be accompanied by a video of her farting too? Fine. I don't care. As long as she's wearing MeUndies in the video. I'm sorry. Thank you. And thank you Je to Jenna, to my wonderful partner here for setting me up with that awesome segue. Guys, holidays are here. Me and these <laughs> are also here. Here's it a is 10 time. minute track of Rihanna farting. Guys, holidays are here. Guys, and you're welcome, me and these, for that idea. Because I know now you're going to write that in a pitch deck and send it to Rihanna's people. And maybe if oh that happens, God. I will have done something good right now. But until I do something good, let me just tell you a little bit about me and these, Because they are the softest underwear you will ever wear. It's three times softer than cotton. It doesn't make sense on paper, but when you put them on your butt... It makes sense and it all clicks and all of a sudden you love underwear again okay it feels like you're wearing nothing but a little bit better it's amazing okay brand new designs each month they work with some of the hottest artists around they're dope people they sponsor the twitch stream okay they have socks they have bralettes they have lingerie for women and men ladies ladies and men tell me where the men are they uh guys i can't even i can't even tell you it's the gift that keeps on giving i have my drawer is literally overflowing with MeUndies upstairs. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know what to do about it. I don't want to throw them out. They're still in great quality because I have them from like months and months and months and months ago, but I keep getting new ones because I got the subscription service, which I love because there's new designs. It's stressful. MeUndies is stressful how good it is, okay? <laughs> Go to MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian right now. That's MeUndies, M-E-Undies.com slash Jenna Julian. You get 20% off, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Guys, I can't even tell you how great they are enough. Like, I can't even tell you enough. Okay, I'm going to need to go take a little ride right now. And If I were to choose what Julian. ride it would be, it would be Lyft. And right now, they're looking for drivers. So if you want to drive for Lyft. Did you segue in if you, segue? If you want to drive for Lyft. <laughs> see, that's that's my next level. I just hit my next level. I've reached my final form. Segway into another sponsor from another sponsor. Guys... <laughs> Lyft is awesome, okay? Nine out of ten Lyft rides get a perfect five-star rating, okay? It's the ride-sharing service that the company treats their drivers right, okay? You get tips when you drive people. You keep 100% of the tips. You cash out instantly with express pay. You don't have to wait weeks to get paid. That's great. The, the tips add up. Over $200 million has dollars have been made by drivers since the tipping feature was introduced. When I get a nice Lyft ride and I have a good conversation, he drives me pretty far, she drives me pretty far, whatever, I get out, I'm like, you know what? The tip thing pops up, and I'm like, yes. Why didn't this always exist? This is so great. You, you tip your bartender, why wouldn't you tip, tip your driver? That could be you right now, okay? Earning that money on your hours. A great company overall, okay? Right, right now, go to lyft.com. That's L-Y-F-T dot com slash Jenna Julian. And you get a $500 new driver bonus, okay? And then you get an awesome new activity to make money doing. It's really great. Okay. Thank you to Lyft. Thank you to MeUndies uh, for this episode and for the whole entire year of being amazing podcast sponsors. And that goes for all of our sponsors. Really, really appreciate the support. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Speaking of sponsors, let's get back to the podcast. That wasn't I it. thought you were going to segue that into wasn't something even else. I got very concerned. Were you going to leave? Yeah. All right. Let's do the next one. YouTubers. Not, not a, oh, okay. I was saying we do... Memes. Okay, memes. Do uh, memes. Then we'll do YouTubers. Then we'll do personal. My favorite meme is under the desk. I know. Right I don't there. Want... Julian! What? Show them. What? I, I like the blinking guy meme, and I like that. Okay? I know I like a lot more, but I couldn't think of... I don't know how to... Like... I know. I could barely think of any, but... If you, the, here... you realize the whole point of this is that you're supposed to punch the person after. Yeah, I grew up in, and went to school also. Well, then why don't you ever do it? Because I'm not going to punch you. <laughs> why not? <laughs> Why the fuck? Uh, I'll punch Colin. I got him a bunch of times. I'm funny. But you never. Count. It's it's it's. You just get the satisfaction of someone looking at it. Yeah, because they feel stupid. And you got to be below your waist. I want to. I airdropped a picture of my hand to Colin, and he looked at it. Got yeah. him. I just appreciate you know 2017 brought as, it back as dumpster fire as as a year it was. It also made it so this is a fun game. <laughs> just getting you to look at this. But we don't need to punch oh, anybody. No. Just the it's like a you peaceful look. 2017 version yeah. that you can use tech with. You can airdrop things. You can do the open for a surprise version. I love it. I love it all. It's just all great. All right. Uh, YouTubers? Or you have other memes? Did you care about my memes? I'm sorry. You said you couldn't find any memes. I didn't know you had That's memes. That's not what I said. 
Roll it back. <laughs> rewind the tape. The SpongeBob typing. That one's fucking good. That one's <laughs> First really I was good. like, this is such a dumb meme. And then you see like someone type things out like that. It really makes me laugh. It's but, really funny. Um, first of all. Because it's so petty. I love all the I love the pettiness of the memes this yeah. year. All of them are petty. I love it. I love the first of first all. First of all is good. Because of that one fucking tweet that was like First of all, you're not my dad. You can't keep vo- quoting vines from three years ago and expect people to know what you're talking about. And the person wrote, First of all, you're not my dad. <laughs> Uh, I'm so excited. I hope I hope V2 is something yeah. cool. My my last meme is just all vines. All like, vines. They're not dead to me. They're more powerful than ever. Well, what's interesting to me is, like, this year I've seen more and more vine threads of, like, the obscure shit that we used to watch mm-hmm. than I ever saw when vine was around, mm-hmm. which is crazy. But it's cool because it makes me feel like the memes that we love so much from vine are not dead. Yeah. They're still alive. They're still kicking. It's also so impressive to see them continue to have a lifespan on YouTube or on, on like Twitter. Or, or, yeah, just people are still laughing and yeah. still enjoying them. Yeah. Like, they're, the Vine content is aging. Very Some well. of it is like, aging like, relatively well. Like good wine. Yeah. Like, they're still funny. Yeah. All right. You have YouTubers? Your favorite YouTubers of 2017. Binging with Babish. We He's, know. Well, okay, relax. Okay. Sorry. Don't I, cough at me. That's my only really large, like large scale YouTuber that I picked for this list. And I know how, mu- how much he's grown and he's like hugely popular now. Mm-hmm. But I will say I, you know, I saw, I found out about him early this year and it's just cool. It's cool to see a, a channel pop up that's doing something that, that is being done in a creative new way. With a, with a certain style that you haven't seen before. And I think uh, one of the reasons Andrew succeeds at his channel, that's his name, Andrew, is because he, he has so many different elements that are working in one place. It's not just cooking. It's not just food from TV and movies. It's not just cinematography. And it's not just good voiceover. It's all of it. Every yeah. single and video. And he's funny. And he's funny. And I think that combo is like such a deadly combo. It's like mm-hmm. so good. He's got all these aspects working for him on a visual level, audio level. Uh, you know, you connect with him. There's the nostalgia of these movies. Yeah. He's entertaining. Really, really great channel. Like one of my favorites I've ever found. Probably my favorite of this year. Don't look at my list. I'll look at what I need to look at. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have some old. You just you have one. That's it. No, I have three others. Oh, okay, four, okay. One, two, four others. I have some like old school OG YouTubers that I feel like have had an incredible resurgence for me personally. Yeah. Uh, one of which is Shane Dawson. Mm. Like I love the way that Shane has reinvented himself yet again. And I'm really enjoying what he's making. And it seems like he is too, which is like doubly enjoyable. You know, when you can tell that someone's soul in life isn't being sucked out of them. Yeah. I've been and that they're succeeding in doing what yeah. they want. Yeah. I, I th- I'm, I'm proud of Shane, and I think that what he's doing is really, really cool. And I've enjoyed his content in 2017 a lot. And I his agree. podcasts. I agree. If Now, if he can only get his ass on our podcast again, we miss you, Shane. <laughs> but for real, uh, his podcast, like every single time we drive somewhere. Road trips. All we do is always listen to Shane and friends. Always. Yeah, that's a great fucking show. Yeah, no, but it is cool. The point, the point of like a YouTuber that you liked, or, or used to like, and, and still like, but you see them go through kind of a metamorphosis, and it works for them, and they're yeah. happier. Like it's a cool thing to watch. I I just think it's cool because I've always enjoyed Shane, and to like to grow with him, and you know, I mean, we're friends personally, but like. When, when you like someone's content when you're 13 and then, you know, they've grown up and you've grown up and you can still find a way to like them when you're a little older. I just think it's rad, you know. So I like your content. Yeah, like he's a he's an adult and he's doing stuff that he wants to. And, and I find it entertaining because I'm also an adult. But I would maybe if I was 13. Who cares? I mean, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just yeah. it's like it's amazing to me that when someone is talented and entertaining and they're, you know, going through that. I still, I still like you, no matter what you're doing. And, but I, I do. I think he's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Definitely. Um, also, along those lines, speaking of reinventing yourself, Trisha Motherfucking Paytas had an amazing 2017. 
Oh, I, I'm pretty sure I've said this on this podcast before, but I feel like I could write a dissertation about Trisha Paytas and why I think she's fucking brilliant and, and incredible. And, you know, a lot of people didn't like her for the longest time because they didn't understand what she was doing or like... The, she's the internet's best troll that people don't yeah, even know she is. But she's gone through these waves, I feel like, of trolling super hard and then not trolling and being herself and people are, you know, mean to her as a person or like not understanding. But like... I I feel like she's gone full blown, like even less fucks, which I didn't know was even possible. Yeah. And I feel like people are starting to actually appreciate her, which has been really wonderful to see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the I love you, Jesus is the bop of the century. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bop. It's the fuck. Like when we play custom games on Twitch and someone's playing that song or they like type it in so it, it reads in that voice. Like, yeah, the robot I, voice. One time I overdosed, but I wasn't lifted by the ambulance. But by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. so, but it makes me laugh every time. Yeah. And, you know, regardless of whether or not she says it's serious or any, I don't care. It is outrageously entertaining. I find her to be one of the most entertaining people ever. Yeah. There is. I don't care whether she's trolling or not. Just don't care. I think that she's fucking brilliant and hysterical. And she's one of the best trolls on the Internet of all time. Damn. What yeah. a Trisha stan. I am a Trisha stan. But I, I'm like, whatever. I, I just, it, I feel like I've also said it on the podcast in the past. You have. It's like, yeah. she's super, even when she's being, you know, a little more real. Yeah. <laughs> she's like opening up and talking about things. You know, there's always nasty people in the comments that are just there to say something real dick to her. Yeah. And it hurts my heart when people are just really mean to her for some reason. Because I feel like she gets a lot of shit sometimes. Yeah. But it, it's been really, as a former and current and future Trisha Stan, it's been really nice to watch people tweet things to her like, this is fucking dope. This yeah. made me laugh. Well, pe like you said, people are starting to pick up on like what she's actually been doing. Yeah. but And it's smart and it's not stupid. Yeah, but even when she's being like outrageously transparent and open, you know, she'll be talking about, you know, her time as an escort, whatever. People will always find a reason to yeah. be real fucking angry at her. Yeah. And it, it just bothers me. It's I'm the like, internet, man. Leave Trisha alone. <laughs> That's interesting. I did not think you were going to pick her, but yeah. I, I'm not surprised also. Like every time she posts something, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> she posted one the other day that was like, um, I don't identify as a person anymore. And she just got a plastic bag over her head. <laughs> and she's like, I don't care. I don't care what it is. It's amazing. I don't care what you do. It's fucking fantastic. And I'm here for it. Fair and enough. as long as you're okay as a person, for the most part, do whatever you want on the internet. I'm here to watch it. I think you're a fantastic entertainer. Fair enough. Period. Fair enough. Um, who else did you have? Uh, Dear Someone. Oh, true. Dear Someone. I didn't even think of that. A guy named John runs that channel. Uh, it's, it's a highlight channel, um, primarily of PUBG highlights, it, it edited down to a bite-sized 10 or 11 minute video. But he's kind of, he's made this whole new style that, you know, it's like highlight videos have always had a relatively known, um, formula, right? Good music, cool moments, highs, lows, funny, whatever. But he's done it in such a way that like for video games, at least I've never seen it done like that. Yeah. And I think he's brought the PUBG community closer together by doing what he does. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a special thing, especially when the game has blown up so big to keep it such a cool, fun community. Uh, and when you, when you, when you get a crazy play, it's now a dear someone play, right? It's like, it's like the Kleenex effect, right? You're not saying tissue, you're saying Kleenex. It's, it's like that's the highlight reel name no, now. It's like the the world star of the world star. <laughs> it's the it people is. yell world star at a bar fight. They yell dear someone they when they hit a headshot across the map. Exactly. Yeah. So I think uh, I think cool. he's done a really great job, and I'm excited to see what he does now that you know. I don't expect his videos to completely change, but I am excited to see how he implements the replay feature in his videos. Yeah. Uh, and also shouts out for featuring me a couple times. Appreciate it, dog. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, three of my favorite <clears throat> newer YouTubers uh, are Christine, Sophia Nygaard, and Suzy from Nail Career Education. She's wonderful, by the way. Right? Suzy is wonderful. I was watching her video the other day. I watched the whole entire thing. It was like 20 minutes long. I was like, this is wonderful. It's so relaxing to watch her. She's got... A, a really calming voice. She's well spoken, and it's great production value. Amazing, like, <laughs> amazing. Like, fuck. She's got three camera angles. Amazing and production. Perfect audio. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I could watch that stuff all day. I just find it so entertaining and relaxing. Like even if you were into nails, it's it's like throwing on a fucking who's the person I'm thinking of. Who can say what I do? Are you Who's asking that? me who, Enya. who an artist is? It's like is? throwing on an Enya CD to me. Like watching <laughs> nail career education is like I'm at a spa and it's just like the f- flowing sounds of a river or like some birds chirping. But it's Susie and she's doing some acrylic nails. Fair enough. It's so fucking relaxing. Fair enough. Um, Christine from Simply Nail Logical. Absolutely adore her. I think she's fucking fantastic. She knows that. Everyone knows that. I love her. And I also love Sophia Nygaard. And I feel like between the two of them, I'm I'm so... Who do you like more? Oh, my God, stop. Well, I've spent, <laughs> I've spent a little, slightly more time with Christine. I don't know Sophia as well. But um, I'm, I'm so, like, I'm impressed. I'm, like, happy and excited about something, like, pretty niche as Christine being, you know, over the top, head over heels in love with nail polish. That it, It's, like, the more specific it is, the more into it we are. You know what I mean? Or I am speaking for myself. No, I get that. It's that like makes sense. When she's just sitting in her fucking room doing 100 coats of nail polish, it's just, like... Her passion for nails and nail polish and being excited about things and being excited about hollows, like, it, it makes you, it's so, like, contagious. You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? That, I get that, for sure. And it's just so cool to watch someone with a, a niche passion infest everyone else with yeah. that, you know? It's because it's like, I don't even have to particularly li- like nails in order to be completely entertained by what you're doing. Yeah. And Christine is a funny and amazing person outside of that. But I mean, that's what sort of grabbed everyone. And it's just, it's, I, I'm excited to see what she does in the future. Yeah. You know, and I, I hope that she doesn't feel like she needs to be in the box of nails forever. Yeah. Like, because she's a wonderful, entertaining person. She can she can get outside that box anytime she wants. She's going to succeed. Yeah, it's not even a box. No, I mean, I'm, but she, she will literally, she's very funny and talented, and she can do a lot of different things yeah. if she wants. And um, Sophia Nygaard was making a lot of content this year that I just thought was fantastic because it's not like your traditional YouTube. And I feel like this was a lot of growth for a lot of people was that, you know, YouTube when I started was like your video can't be over three minutes or else people are going to click off it. It needs to be really short and quick and funny and to the point in order to be a video. And as it's turned into 2017 now, we're here to like do whatever. Yeah, we're here for longer videos. We're here to spend time. Yeah, I'm cool for an hour podcast. Make it fucking two hours, please. Like I want to throw down in the background and like chill and do my makeup or you know whatever. Yeah. And um, her content to me is something that's so like. I'm genuinely curious. Like you're doing the things that that people would like to do, but you know maybe don't have the time, energy, effort, money, whatever to do. Yeah. And it's not like it's not overdone. She just she does it, and and I really I, I felt like watching her content has been just a reminder that like you don't need to do like a ton of crazy things in order to, like, have a great channel, which is what's been really reassuring about the podcast. Well, like, a lot of stuff that I did on my channel in 2017, it's, like, it's a wonderful reassurance of, like, I'm I'm here because I'm interested and excited. Invested in you as a person. And I'm invested in you as a person, and and it's really cool. And I I don't know. Maybe I'm not wording that so great. No, no, that that makes sense. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's nice seeing people succeed who aren't, doing crazy shit for views well it's not a gimmick yeah yeah and it's nice to know that like that is still something that people value to the point where people who make content like that like christine like sophia like are wildly successful at yeah. it. yeah i mean some now. of it's a little crazy but it's like i'm i'm here because you're making something i'm genuinely but interested that, in that, and to you're, me, you're making it really great but and to me really that's fun. that's synonymous with what you've done like you oh, have started to make channel, like you've started to turn your channel into selfish Jenna time, which we've talked <laughs> about a million times, but you've started to be really selfish with your videos, doing exactly what you feel like doing that week. And you've been rewarded by it because people are so invested in you and you being genuine in what you decided to fucking create that week well, yeah, in whatever format. Fun. Yeah. I think having fun. And I think, really... I think that's a big reason why you identify with them. It's because you're a lot like that. Nah, I love them. It's... I love Christine a lot. Yeah. You guys have a bromance. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, it's it's it is a nice reminder to be like you as yourself in whatever you're doing is good enough. Yeah, you know, it is. I'm it's more a, than entertained. It's an incredible reminder. And you don't have to do anything other than just be here and whatever. You're yeah. good enough as you are. Yeah. You know, those were my. Oh, and also. What? Come on. Jack's films. Oh, wait, is this is this you putting to bed the rivalry? No, I just think objectively he made really great content oh, this shit, year. Oh shit, dude! What you should have done is wrote me a note and told me to say it, <laughs> so you didn't have to say it. All right, the next channel that is good from 2017 is Jack's Films, submitted by anonymous. Quality content, not quality dogs. That's what it says. Who the fuck wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's he's had a fantastic year and well deserved. Like he's been doing like really awesome shit this year. Do you want to say anything else that I can relay, or are you done? You guys have a big boxing match. We just sit here in silence for the next ten minutes while she makes that face. <laughs> I feel the tension. I know Jack more? is watching. Do, do you have any more? No, he isn't. Do you have any more YouTubers? <laughs> Matt Joes. Uh, Matt Joes! I, I got to become real life friends with him. One of the hardest working, most talented people I've I've met and been able to watch and become friends with. Like a huge example of what passion in your field can do for you. Yeah. A little bit. You know, I like, you know, he, that dude is so massively talented, but it shows you that talent plus a whole bunch of fucking hard work and just keeping your head down and doing it. Like, I still believe he's underappreciated and I'll probably forever believe that because, you know, um, his channel is a lot smaller than mine and I look at his shit and I'm like, you know, you just, you are, you're good, man. And I, I, I feel like learning from him, both watching his videos, talking to him online, but then meeting him and going to shoot together. It's, it was an experience that I, I value very highly. Mm -hmm. So Matt Jones is definitely up there. He's pretty great. And a little, um, Honorable mention to Lindsay Daly. She's a Dink fam who has a channel. She does um, motion graphic work, and I think she does it for a living. But her channel is kind of just a hobby thing. And she is the one who made the new Wapsicle animated logo. Uh, she also made the, the last minute trips animation with the darts hitting the map uh, um, of all the locations we've been. And I just I think she's worth mentioning because. She had just tweeted me one of her videos, and I watch a lot of the videos you guys tweet me all the time, whether they're yours or not, but I, I watch it, and it was her making a wafsicle, like making a physical waffle in the shape of a popsicle, and I was like so obsessed with how she did it with the graphics, and it was so clean looking, and it was so unexpected more than anything, that I was like, dude, like, that's fucking cool, and then we then we hired her to do our, our animation treatment for the logo, and... I think it's just cool the way the internet works like that because Man. I literally would have never known about her or her talent until, you know, she tweeted that shit at me. So honorable mention to her. That's rad. All right. Now, now I wanted to go through our 2017 proud moments of ourselves, which is, sounds really self-indulgent, right? Like you're just like, oh, this is what I did in 2017. And I know a lot of YouTubers do that video. Or like in this year, this is what I did. And they have pictures and music and that's great. I think this is a cooler format of doing it. I think I just wanted to like go through some of the things that I remember happening this year that I'm proud of. I am also kind of proud and not really ashamed to say that I feel like I had a good year and I want to just kind of go through some of the stuff and I want you to do the same. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. Do you want me to go first? Or you want to go first? Doesn't matter. Can I tell you my top moment of 2017 personally? What is your top moment? Getting our son ad. Really? Yeah. He's such a wonderful boy. You know, we love him so much. That's like pretty much my list. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I don't want to be like, I just want to read through it because I, I like went through my channel, which is so cool. It's like a fucking diary of everything that happened. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> now let me indulge in myself for a second real quick. Well, I hit a million subscribers. Um, I was invited to South by to be a de uh, guest on the DJI panel. I created Wafsicle. I shot seven episodes of our new original series and went to eight new places that I'd never been before. Uh, I was brought out to New York City to be a part of the, uh, the release of DJI's new drone, The Spark, which won Drone of the Year, which is really cool. Uh, we won a Shorty Award. 
Got a new couch. <laughs> Got my wisdom teeth out. Uh, released 17 different collections of original pins and kind of created a space for myself in that new merch area that I w- always kind of wanted to like build a brand like that. Got a hamster. Had a, Ad! Had one of the coolest birthdays I can remember, which you were responsible for. It was pretty fun. Uh, Twitter tweeted at me. <laughs> When we were all arguing about pulp versus no pulp. <laughs> Apparently Twitter is a no pulp er. Um, for the first time I made the trending page and then I made it two times more. And I say that for the first time because it was like uh with the UFO video I made it, but this was the first time a vlog mm-hmm. had made it and then I made two more times, which was so fucking insane and surprising. Did a twenty four hour Twitch stream, raised over ten thousand dollars for charity in total between the pins and the Twitch stream, I believe, maybe even a little more. Um, I met and got to sponsor a beautiful cow named Buttercup. Mm. Rest in peace. Uh, I shot my first short film, and I witnessed and documented a total solar eclipse in the highest path of totality. Julian, we are all so proud of you. On behalf of all the dang fam that knows and loves you, we're all very, very, very incredibly proud of you. Thank you very much. I know. You guys are uh, very, very supportive, and I see it all the time. It's been a good year. We love you. I love you the most, though, so all y'all can just fuck off because I love him the most. Okay. <laughs> no, but like, really, though, you, you did so much and it's been an absolute pleasure to watch you like, you know, grow up. And I don't mean that in a demeaning way, <laughs> like to watch you like Thanks. grow <laughs> <laughs> to like grow and learn and like yeah. change and you know I don't know I could say so many things but I'm just I'm really proud of you and you did have an incredible year and you have a lot of reasons to be really proud and really excited thank you that means a lot yeah. really appreciate it I love you I love you too alright no more sappiness your turn read your list damn it oh shit who we fighting okay mine was a <laughs> ad <laughs> uh, my own YouTube channel, I feel like, because I've sort of liberated myself from the making other people laugh into making myself laugh, which has been a needed transition and makes me pretty happy. And it's making me happy that people also find that to be something happy. Um, getting back into any sort of physical capability to do anything after the car accident it was a it was a long road. I know we talked about that, but I'm I'm really proud in 2017 the fact that like I can walk without pain and you know do physical things uh, in terms of like working out without pain. Like I, I don't feel like super great. Like I definitely feel like I I took a year and was unable to do a whole lot, uh, but I feel a lot better in that you know. It's a lot of work and it's really hard and it's like a long road, but I've, I'm really proud that we can go like work out now and I don't feel like I have to stop. <laughs> um, the Twitch stream, I'm incredibly proud of. And I feel like every, you know, couple years or every year or so, we sort of sit down and have a powwow about, you know, what are we going to do this year that's like branching out a little bit or, you know, doing something a little different. Like, what do you want to change? What do you want to keep the same? What are you thinking? And the Twitch stream we started a couple years ago, and I'm just, I'm really proud of how it's turned out. And, you know, PUBG, I think, did a lot for us in terms of wanting to be live all the time. But, like, I'm really proud of that community. And, you know, I think the Dink Fam started here in the podcast, but there's, like, almost a whole other newer community happening on the Twitch stream. And it's just, it's really fucking cool to see that, like with the Discord and and everything to watch people interact. Our mods started dating. They're now moving in together for the first time. And uh, there's a couple of other couples that happened in the the chat. It's just like a really, really, really special uh, like thing. And I think it's really... Like, as, as intimate as you feel, maybe, like, with your favorite YouTuber or person on the internet, because I feel the same way, um, and there's a level of intimacy in, in, like, being live and watching people live that I totally get, and I think is really cool. So I'm, I'm excited to continue to do that in 2018. I'm really proud. Excuse you. Kermit's crying. And I'm really proud of, of what we've turned it into. Um, my nephew was born. 
<laughs> I'm so proud that no qualified professional has touched my hair all of 2017. Wow. And, uh, yeah, my nephew was born. <laughs> I, uh... So even though the year was a dumpster fire, my nephew was born! <laughs> I know. He's adorable. Uh, I, I... I second everything there, and I one one last time before we're in the next year. I just want to say shouts out to you for turning a channel with an obscene amount of subscribers and pressure into something that you were happy with, and having it succeed so well on a weekly basis, hitting the trending page all the time. It's just an incredibly proud thing because I've seen the metamorphosis, and I, I don't even know if you want to call it that. I've just seen you grow as a person. So to watch that reflect in your content, and then to your content and then back into yourself and your life. It's a it's a rewarding thing to watch because there's nothing that you want more than your significant other, your partner, to be happy in what they're doing with their yeah. life. And and to be rewarded handsomely uh, in terms of, you know, having people support you through all that is is all you could ever hope for. So yeah. one last time, I'm thank you, really Julie. proud of you. And I think it was a really cra crazy good year for you. Yeah, thank you, Julian. And I, I want to also say thank you. I mean, you know... <laughs> First of all, thank you for letting us do different things. You know, maybe every podcast isn't going to be the greatest podcast you've ever heard in your life. Sometimes we're trying out new stuff, we're trying out new formats, we're trying out new ideas. Maybe it's not always going to be great. The same with a YouTube channel or a vlog or my radio show or the Twitch stream. Like, you got to just try and try and try. And I feel like you as an audience and as peers, as people that, you know, have a two way conversation with us a lot. Like I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate your patience and your willingness to let us continue to do different things and express ourselves in different ways. Like one thing I've loved about the Twitch stream is like, I'll go to Julian and be like, yo, can you let me open this stream tonight? And I'll sit there, do some weird shit. Yeah throw it back on then we'll play some video games but it's yeah. it's like it's such a cool way to like i'm gonna sit down and just do the weirdest fucking thing ever right now and have a great time yeah i i just appreciate that um you guys continue to let us take risks and remain independent and give us the freedom to do that uh, because I don't, I don't, I don't want to be corporately owned. I don't, I don't, I don't want to answer to anybody. Like that's my dream is to be as independent as possible. Yeah. And I want to thank you guys for your continued support, not only on my channel, Julian's channel, the vlogs, uh, this this show. Like it, it's just, it means a lot to us. And this was a a great fun year. We had a lot of fun this year. We had a lot of fun this year. I second that. Thank you guys for everything. You guys are the most supportive, wonderful bunch of people I ever have encountered on the internet. And I'm so proud to call you my internet family. It really is awesome. You guys are the best. It's pretty fun. Why are you growling? She's literally walking on the keyboard over there. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm excited. I'm excited for next year. And, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's been a rough year worldwide. A lot of awful shit's happened. You know, stuff is scary. The world is scary. But like, I'm, I feel really good in the fact that I've like grown up a lot on the internet, as have you, as have we together. And it's comforting that, you know, you guys have continued to support us. And like in the future, like when our lives change again and like we're older and stuff, I don't know what the future holds, but it, it at least gives me a little more confidence to continue moving on and growing up and, and going on with our lives being like, you know, it's, you know, it's the most important thing is just making sure that you're okay and you're happy and, and keep working on that. And the rest of it's whatever. But the fact that you guys have supported us through that, me personally turning into <laughs> A 31-year-old lady that has a basketball game tomorrow. I just, I really appreciate it. So, are you excited? I'm very excited. I, like I'm excited I said, for a little time off, though, too. Like I said at the beginning of the podcast, I can't fucking wait for what's going to happen in 2018. Like, the momentum of everything moving forward, it just keeps me so, so happy and ready. I'm ready for a break as well. But when we come back, uh, I can't wait to see you guys again here and elsewhere. So, thanks for an awesome year from... Mr. and Mrs. Dink to all our Dink children. Thank you guys. <laughs> Even though real. some of them are older than us. <laughs> yes. Yes. You are still our Dink children. Uh, 
Guys, thank you for an awesome year. And we hope you have a wonderful break for the holidays. Guys, take care of yourself. Treat yourself. Enjoy yourself. And we'll see you guys on the internet next year. Bye.